make sure everyone is here and everyone is able to um, hear the conversation tonight. Thank cool. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I got a king on the show tonight. Man, I appreciate you for show. Thank you for nominated. having me, man. Grammy nominated, ASCAP award winner, Billboard award winner. Appreciate um, it. He's worked with Jennifer Lopez, Trey Songs, yeah. Jay Mark Blackson, yeah. Jessica Simpson. Don't play oh, this Jessica. Oh, Jessica. <laughs> Lenny Kravitz. Lenny. Um, oh, man. Uh, what fans? I got a story about that Lenny session. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and many more um, projects he's worked on behind the scenes and and and, and has um, given his life 20 plus years, probably even more than that, um, to, I ain't going to tell you age. Um, <laughs> to, I don't care. It's cool, 45. <laughs> to, to the culture, to the music. Uh, um, and thank you so much. Thank you, King, for joining me. Troy Oliver on the show. Everyone show him some love in the comments. If you're appreciate listening, show him some love tonight, man. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it. Thank no you. doubt. Salute. Thank you. Appreciate it. How was your day, my brother? How was your day? Um, it was a good day. It was a long day, you know, but it was a good day, you know. I always working, good. always grinding. Oh yeah, yeah. I had some chicken and waffles from uh Nana's chicken and waffles out in Congress. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had the cinnamon apple waffle. Mm. Yeah. I that consider myself good. somewhat of a foodie, so yeah, yeah, it, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. They don't have regular potatoes. You know how like breakfast potatoes? They potatoes, they have Regular potatoes, red potatoes, and sweet potatoes with green and red peppers all in one, and onions. Oh. Where, where is it at? Conyers, Conyers, Con Georgia. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. amazing. We didn't cut you a check because you just sold <laughs> more. And, and I'm, I'm coming out to Georgia this weekend on Friday. I'm gonna be out there for a couple of days, so you just sold okay. me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Trust Full me, I, I, trust me. Wife is texting me now. She's like, yeah, <laughs> it's secure. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Um, yeah. You're from Hartford, Connecticut. Actually, um, from, I'm actually uh, from New Haven, Connecticut. Sorry, New Haven, New Haven, Connecticut, yeah, yeah. Um, which is right up the street from New York, I'm from the Bronx originally. Okay. Um, how how was it like for you growing up in, in, in New Haven? Um, New Haven, you know, it's a uh, so lit technically. I grew up in West Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Family was in New Haven, so I was back and forth a lot. I officially moved to New Haven when I was like 14. Mm -hmm. So uh, 14, 15, because I started high school in New Haven. But you no, know, I was always a part of New Haven because that's where my family from. But uh, um, that whole West Haven, New, ha New Haven is all, you know, basically the same. But, you know, it was regular. Where I grew up, I grew up on you know, the, sh the shoreline near the beach. So... Mm -hmm. You know, always at the beach, you know, just being a kid, riding my bike. You know, back then we could ride our bikes all day long. We had to worry about, I came home when the street lights came on. You know, I'm, I'm from that generation. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We didn't have cell phones. You know, I know Atari, Nintendo, like, you know, that, that's the generation I'm, I'm from. So, you know, like, growing up in New Haven, once I got, so West Haven was, I'll say, predominantly white. New Haven is, you know, that's us. So going, switching high schools definitely was like a kind of a culture shock. You know, there's a saying, once you go black, you never go back. Right, 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 yeah. right, right. I lost my virginity when I moved to New Haven. <laughs> 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 I mean, that might be too much, too early in, in the interview, but yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> you said goes down in New Haven, Josh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, what what kind of what kind of music um, was was playing in your household? I know you went to church and 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 you, and you, and you were dedicated to church on a, on growing up as well. Um, what kind of music was you able to listen to? The Punches and the Michael Jacksons. Was you able was you able to listen to other other genres of music, or was it really strict in your household? Um, and you, and you were strict to the uh, to the gospel. That's an interesting question because, so it's interesting because my parents separated and divorced when I was 12. Mm. Uh, my father's a preacher, pastor, so he wasn't super strict in the house, but I definitely didn't listen to as much, you know, secular music from the age of zero to 12. But it was like once my father left, like the gates broke open, like 
Big Daddy Kane, Slick Rick. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That <laughs> like, lit. Yeah. My, everybody, that's when I was more exposed. Like, I, I would hear stuff here and there, but, you know, most of my life I grew up, you know, gospel music in the church. My father's a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. My grandmother was a pastor. You know, I was practically born in the church. My mother's a minister. Aunts is ministers. So, you know, all I really knew was church and gospel. And then I got a good mix of the CCM world, which is the the white Christians, you know, so I have a good, like a gumbo of creativity, what I was exposed to at an early age. But like, once my pops left the crib, it's a rap. <laughs> it's a rap. Radio all day, every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, when, when did you first discover, um, because, you know, I always say that this music chooses you, you don't choose it. So when did you first mm -hmm. discover it? your talent or your love just for playing instruments and wanting to actually um, be a, a musician yourself? Um, it's funny that you use that phrase. I just said that to somebody the other day, like, music chose me. I didn't choose music. Um, I always say that I came out my mother's womb with drumsticks in my hand. <laughs> like, literally. My father's, a music my father's a musician. My grandfather, maternal, was a musician. My paternal grandmother was a musician. My uncle, my father's brother, brother was a musician. Like on my mother's side, like it was just, I had no choice. Like mm. I never chose music. I knew, like you know, you in kindergarten, the first grade, they ask you what you want to be when you grow up. Mm -hmm. I didn't say producer because I didn't know what a producer was, but I just I'm gonna be a musician. You know, teachers laughed at me. I never forget. It was one teacher in eighth grade. She used to always get on me because I used to tap and bang on the desk. I never, I never forget her name. White lady named Mrs. Manzella. God bless you if you're out there tonight watching. Um, but she had said to me, like, you're always banging on the desk and da 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 like, going on for me, like, it's not good. music is not going to get you nowhere. You're never going to do it. Like, she, like, really, like, got on my case one day and kicked me out and sent me to the office. And the principal was like, Troy, what did you do this time? da 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 And I said this time, not that I was always in the principal office, but, you know, another story for another day. But, yeah, so I was <laughs> like, in there a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so I just tapped it, you know. You know I said, you know, I was just tapping on this. And the principal was cool. He's like, listen, man, there's a time and place for everything. You know, when you're in her class, you know, the, the, you put me to, I was like, I believe in you, man. You're going to do great things when you go get older. So, you know, I had a little bit of encouragement and other folk along the way that would be like, ah, oh, you're wasting your time. You never do nothing. But I knew nothing else. I had no other skills. I had no other loves. I had no other passion. All I've done my whole entire life was music. I started out on the drums. Then moved to the guitar, the bass, and keys. Like I ain't, do, I've never done anything else. Mm -hmm. So did you ever, you know, you know, and I can relate to that, just being in school and 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 people telling you, you know, the naysayers, people telling you, hey, you ain't gonna be able to do this, you know, mm -hmm. do that. You know, I do concerts and I do production on shows and and and, and I remember people like, nah, you're not gonna do that. Like, you're not gonna do right. that. I'm, like, I'm gonna yeah. do this. I'm gonna be in this field, and you know, having that. Having both, having people that support you and people that don't support you, it just drives. It, yeah. it, it really does. It really does drive you. It um, is to, to to step to walk in your purpose. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you. Oh God, I just lost my question. I had it right there. You um. So when 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 did when did like things start to like shift for you, like when. You know, was after high school that you started to pretty much work with artists more. Like, when did when did you really start to just take um, the production side really serious and really just say, "This is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life for sure." So, um, in high school, you know, I was in the band, the marching band. Um, we had a little jazz band. I went to Hill House High School. Uh, shout out to Hill House. AC is my alma mater. Um, yeah. In high school is when we de I developed the like working in a group type of thing. Mm -hmm. Had like you know we had a little jazz band, so we would do like old Jody. We would do not old. We were covering Jody, Guy, Silk, all the records that was hot in that time. And so at, at that time, I'm just playing keys, just playing keys. I had a cousin of mine, his name is Abel. He's like, Yo, I got a group. We going to the studio. You can play. I need you to come with me to the studio. I'm like 15, 16, never been to a studio before. I just know music. So I was like, no, I was 16. So I go in the studio and 
he's articulating what he's hearing. He's like, can you play this? I'm like, yeah. So we just vibing going back and forth. I'm like, wow, this is it. This this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I do like at, at the age, so all my life I knew it was gonna be music. But at the age of 16, I realized how. I knew it was okay, I'm gonna I'm be a producer. This is my love. And from there, the rest is history. Did you ever, you know how people always tell you, hey man, plan a plan, a, a, a plan B just in case if this don't work out? You know, did, did you ever think about a plan B at all? I don't know what plan B is. <laughs> Pill that the ladies take. It's plan A. After, uh, and that, and that, the plan B, that's the pill they take, right? After you spend the night on the one night stand or something like <laughs> that. You spend the night that you didn't want to spend? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, never had a, I never had a fallback. I, I never mm -hmm. considered it. It was, for me, it wasn't even like, I didn't know anything else. All I knew was music. I didn't know how I was going to do music. Like, at a young age, I was content. Like, I was 14 years old playing with grown men in bars. Like, they would sneak me in the bar to come play. You know what I'm saying? Cover bands in top 40s at 14, 15 years old. I'm sneaking the bars, playing the band. I was in my... I was it. I didn't know it could get better and there was levels to it. So I knew this is it. Whatever. That was, com that was, that was confirmation for you. Yeah. I think that was confirmation for you right there. Like, you being someone actually sneaking you into a place that you aren't supposed to be yeah. to play... That means that you're really good because yeah. they're not just going to score risk, risk yeah. for, for just anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, literally. I'm in a, a bar, grown folk. I'm 15 years old playing the keyboard. Wow. So we talking about, let's groove tonight. <laughs> and I'm on the keys at 14 years old. <laughs> uh, that was um, it. Your mentor. Um, Troy uh, Troy Taylor, how do, I know that he's from he's from um, New Haven as well, right? Yep, he's absolutely from New Haven. I have two mentors, I have Corey Rooney and Troy Taylor. Wow, how did you how yeah. did you how did you meet how did you um, link up with these guys? How did you meet Troy? If you if you want to, how did you meet him? So Troy is um, our families go way back. Uh, my aunt was his daycare school teacher, so our families were connected like for years. Um, before Troy took off and moved to New York, we played like a couple of gigs together, believe it or not. He was on keys, I was on drums. My original instrument was drums. And so, you know, our families connected, whatever, you know, it was just, it was just a natural progression just because of the connection that we've had through our families throughout the years. Mm -hmm. So when I started producing and doing it seriously, took it for real, like when Troy took me under his wing, that's when he was with characters. I don't know if you remember he was with characters, Charles Farrar. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, you know, he took me under his wing and just, like, really showed me the ropes and just taught me a lot about production and the music business and just, you know, doing what mentors do to this day. Like, I'm 45 years old. I'm not going to tell his age, but I'm 45. And <laughs> one thing I realized, one thing, I'll, ne I'll never be too big where I say I don't have a mentor or I don't look up somebody or I don't have somebody that, you know what I'm saying, that checks me or check my balance, like, you know, you know, yo, is this all right? Am I cool with this? Like, I feel like no matter how old you get or how well craft you are, how well you are in your craft, you should always have someone that can give you checks and balances. Like, yo, you're wilding right now. You, you, you fall back. So, yo, that's good. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. So, I always, me and Troy, we have, you know, of course, we communicate. We're always working. But outside of the work, we have conversations about, you know, life and real life and all that. So, he's definitely been the consummate mentor. Uh, Corey Rooney just love Corey, all business. Corey's body. <laughs> Corey definitely schooled me on the music business, uh, production, uh, being creative. You know, Corey is the reason why I, I was able to do the Jennifer stuff, the genuine stuff. Corey signed me to Sony Music and uh, mentored me like in the music industry as far as how to operate and maneuver throughout the music business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, a lot of politics. And, Nothing but politics. You know, I always say music business. Business is the larger word. And that's what it is. You know, it's not for the faint of heart. If you have if you wear your, your feelings on your sleeve, if you don't have patience, if you can't take criticism, whether it's positive or negative, 
then this is not the business for you. It's not for you. If you have an excuse for everything, if if someone is like complimenting you or getting on you about something, you gotta have a comeback. You just can't sit there and just like receive pause. Well, yeah. You gotta this is not for you. Like I'm talking to you right now. I'm telling you where you where you are, but you have a you wanna come back at me trying to explain why. Nah, you're not ready. What's yeah. what's what's something that um Corey has um that has told you, maybe a word that has taught you, something that sticks with you out of everything you probably learned from him and 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 and, 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 and Troy Taylor, something that had stuck with you that you always carry. One thing Corey told me, and this is when we did the Someone to Love You record. He said all he said never go with the trend. Always be genuine to who you are creatively and create classic music. I said, what's classic music? He said, music that in 20 years, you'll be, still be getting a check for. It. Then I did Differences and Someone to Love You. Like, literally. Having those thoughts in my mind, like, Corey literally is like, this trendy stuff, it's cool. But it'll get you a check for now, maybe a couple of years. But in 20 yeah. years, 15, 20 years, when you're older, you know what I'm saying? You got kids and grandkids. He told me this before I had grandkids. I had kids, wow. but like, he told me, like, and, and he said it often, like, do classic music. He would come in the studio while I'm working on something. He said, that's dope. It's too trendy. Make sure you mm. do some classics today. Yeah. And records like Someone to Love You and Differences, Thomas. Yeah, you still, hear, you, know? you still hear that wedding. You still hear it on the radio. Yeah, and that's what that was. Genuine and 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 my friend's biggest records. And it's yeah, there. literally. Um, what what's the process right to to recording a successful record? What do you mean successful? What's a successful record? Like something that you can like something that is timeless. Like what is the process to doing that? just the process and putting that together? <sighs> to be honest with you, uh, you can't plan it. Like, it's literally all about the vibe. Um, I don't know if you've seen my post lady, um, me and Genuine, we're working together again after mm -hmm. some time. He finally back in the studio recording. He hasn't been in the studio in five years. Wow. So we were recording again. And um, he had told... Uh, told the other guys that was in the room we did differences like I created the track you know we was in the vibe and creating and then once I got it to a certain point he was like yo get out <laughs> I'm about to write this in like literally 15 minutes the song was done he wrote like, differences in 15 minutes maybe 20 but yeah 15 minutes <laughs> he said maybe 20 maybe 21 <laughs> but it was a, it was it was a... he had the hook in 15 minutes wow and he did the verse on the spot like live we didn't he didn't write anything down like it just flowed from the top of his head and we went back and forth on the verses but um like we didn't plan it like i mean we planned him working we planned working together but we didn't plan the vibe like the vibe was just crazy and on that particular album i ended up getting four songs on that album because we were just vibing like the vibe was we were just working Unmatched. yeah yeah like Unmatched. Yeah, it, it 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 always it has to be it has to be genuine, um, it has to be sincere, you know. Everybody got to be on the same page and in the right space and yeah, get those definitely. timeless records. Yeah. And it always seem it always seems like it's either the song that you have to fight for to be as a single, right, or the song that took a minute to write was one of the most successful, yeah. you know. Like it's always yeah. seem it's, it seems like it's it's either it's like it's always either or you know what I mean right. or the one like, you, the one you don't expect Cause if I could be honest right now I didn't think different I didn't feel like different this should have been the same was gonna be that one wow. yeah I, there was another song I did on an album called Tribute to a Woman mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. because I'm a musician I played the guitar on that and I'm like man I play some good guitar on that <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> He said, this is, he said, this mind, is what we need. Yeah, in my mind, it was like, this real soulful, real R&B. I'm like, this is it. So when I got the call from the record label, it was like, hey, Difference is about to be the single. I was like, really? Y'all sure? They was like, it's the single. We're going with it. 
and the rest is history. Wow. Wow. When 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 you produce um a a, a record, um how do how do you decide? Because sometimes, of course, you're in a you're in a, a in a studio with an artist. That you guys are working together, and the chemistry is there. You come up with something, but when when you're at home, you're producing something. How do you decide? Hey, who should I send this to? Or even mm -hmm. when you write, because you write as well. How do you decide? Mm -hmm. Hey, who's, who should I send this to first? Um, that that goes back that goes back to the vibe type of situation. Like sometimes when when you know when I start working and I do a chord progression, just in, I'm feeling it, and I start adding drums and then bass as as it start as it starts coming together. Sometimes like well, as I work and most producers, we're, we're humming, we're singing melodies, and like as we're creating, we just it's just a flow. And a lot of times, like if I hit a note, I'm like, oh, that'd be dope for Queen Naja or like, oh, yo, Usher would kill this. Like, it's just the vibe that you get when you're creating. Mm -hmm. You can just feel who that record can, could you go can hear, for. You can hear the voice. You yeah. can hear the voice before there's any vocals on it. Exactly. Exactly. Way before it gets. From my experience, I don't know about most producers, producers, but for me, nine times out of 10, whoever I hear on it, <laughs> They don't end up on interviews with somebody totally different. Um, but when I do with Troy, Troy Taylor, Troy calls me specifically like, yo, I need this for Trey, or I need this for such and such. I need you to give me a track like this. He'll be like, I need you to get in your bag. I need you to pick up the guitar on this one, the acoustic. Like, Troy's very specific and very detailed. Like, Troy know what he wants. So, like, when Troy calls or texts, like, I'm like, okay, boom. I know what I got to do and I know who I'm working for, you know? So it's like more direct, but just on my own, just creating, building a lab, building a library, building a catalog. You just hear as you go. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's one thing about R&B um, is the live instruments. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of producers, you know, and that's not to talk negatively about anyone, but a lot of music that you hear kind of dead, a lot of it's not live instruments. It's it's more yeah. of beat making than actually actually like being a um trying to get the, being a producer. Yeah. Beat making you know and loop and loops, yeah. And loops and different things like that. So mm -hmm. to hear those to hear those live instruments on records this day is yeah. is, is, is I, I got my babies right here. I, I play Ooh. I play my babies. Ooh. It's my baby. What, 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 did you do, <laughs> what, what did you do on that one? Oh, on this one, so that's that's, that's, that that that's a new base. That's a new base. I just got that, but I did the how many times joint on on my other baby over here. Let me get Francine. Come here, baby. Francine. Yeah, I've Francine had Francine to the show. This, this is a five string bass. Say hi, Francine. <laughs> it's a five string bass. I did how many times on this? I've done a lot. I did a lot of music for the TV show Star. I don't, I don't know if y'all remember that. Mm -hmm. I did that with Troy. Did a lot of stuff. With Francine on that, yeah. Wow. Um, while we're on the topic of R&B, you um, you've done a lot of work in R&B. How do you feel about the terms that R&B is dead? Um, R&B is not heading, you know, in the in the in, in the in the good direction. It's becoming more of this, so it's becoming more of hip hop now. How do you how do you feel about the current state of the genre? Uh. I feel R and B is amazing. I don't feel like R and B ever died. I feel like if you love R and B and you truly appreciate, you tru truly appreciate it, mm -hmm. you know where to go to get it. You know, um, was there an era at a time where hip hop literally totally saturated the radio and kind of overshadowed R and B? Absolutely, but that was radio. If you're an R and B lover. You know where to find R&B. You know where to get it. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't never left. We ain't never went nowhere. We've always, mm -hmm. we've been here. That's why I tell yeah. people, I'm like, listen, you know, R&B, I'm like, nah, it's not that. Mm -hmm. You got to just know, you got to just know where to, where to get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, and and it, 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 it was a time, um, like even now, you know, just R&B going to Urban AC and different things like mm -hmm. that. But, you know, the, those musicians are still here. Uh, uh, you know, it's not like they went anywhere. People that yeah. 
of giving you that good R&B music is still giving you that good R&B music. Yeah. Um, I just think with the the way that radio has been and the way that the internet and different things like that has been, it's, like you said, it's kind of like overshadowed mm-hmm. R&B a little bit. And I think that's when people started to use the terms that R&B is dead and it's becoming yeah. more hip-hop. Yeah, I feel like R&B, like I said, was overshadowed by hip-hop, mainly because of the demand of it in the clubs, you know what I'm saying, the 808s, you know, you know we, you and I both know, records are broken in the strip club. All day. Business, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, ain't nobody twerking on the, I want to love you all my life, you know, uh, <laughs> let's go get married, you know, ain't nobody twerking off that, they twerking off bounce, 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 make it, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> you know, it's something totally different. So whatever the strip club play, you know, that's what the radio play, then it's like a cycle. Um, but what I do believe is R&B definitely has found its place in this current era. Because, you know, rappers started trying to sing now, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like the old cliche, all ball players want to be rappers. All rappers want to be ball players. So it's like same thing with R and B. Like rappers started singing now, and especially when Drake started. Well, Drake came out. People like, well, oh, Drake started singing. He came out. You the best. You the best. You know. They talked about. Yeah. They talked about. They talked about Drake like. Yeah. He's not a rapper. He's a singer. They talked about him like. His first all record. The time he was singing him. like the record that broke his career. He sung on like you know what I mean. He sung and he rapped on it. That was his thing. So like. For me, R and B's never been dead, and it it'll never die because it's too strong of a force in the world. Like you can't kill something that's that strong. Like it, it's not dead. It's just if you you may not be hearing it, it may not be saturating, but it's there. But I I do feel like R and B is definitely more prevalent now than it was five years ago, uh, mm-hmm. especially on the radio. You know, you know, you got the Queen Najas, the you know, uh, the list can go on. Uh, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, I like, you know, Eric Billinger's, you know what I'm saying? Hitmaker's definitely took in, taking R&B to a different place, you know, with how he does what he do and just flip it for the R&B artist. So it's just like R&B, it's never, it was never dead. It just didn't have as much exposure as hip-hop did. Right. Right. All right. Good answer. Good answer. Um... You, you know, you've done a lot of records um, with the Queen, my fellow Bronx native, uh, J-Lo. I love Jennifer. I'm, I'm, I'm Can gonna, I tell you something about Jennifer? Please do. Please do. I, I'm, I'm all ears. She smells like the Garden of Eden. <laughs> 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 this is like angels just sprinkled. Heaven juice Listen, on I've, um, <laughs> I've, I've done I've done Coney Island with her. I've done a few shows with her. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I think the last time I seen her was at a title event in Brooklyn, and um, yeah, yeah. Jennifer's a beautiful. So you can you you concur? I'm not. Oh, you said your wife was there. That's my fiance made it. Listen, she. (laughs) (laughs) You'll give me a trouble, man. (laughs) You know what? Moving on. No more Jennifer. No more Jennifer talk. No more Jennifer. Bye, Jen. Bye. Bye. No, but she's a sweetheart. Very down to earth, very, you know, communicative. Like, she don't, you know, I've never, of course, we was working together, but Jennifer never gave me the I'm over here, you over there type vibe. Like, she's always been cool down to earth. (laughs) She said, Rihanna smells good. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) But um, musically, the chemistry, um, that you guys have because you guys done you've done a, a, a few records yeah um with jennifer um you know so yeah the chemistry how was the chemistry with her in the studio um it had a lot to do with her and her was just like her uh her energy she was always cool laid back like hard worker like jennifer would spend like hours in the studio like, she was like i came to work and i'm not gonna leave till it's done you know what I'm saying on breaks, you know what I'm saying? She in the room clowning with us, we laughing and joking, we dancing. Um, I literally we literally wrote a song together one time, like in between recording. Uh we had there was a uh piano in the room and I'm sitting down and I'm just, you know, doodling around, just playing. 
And she was like, oh, my God, what is that? What are you playing? I'm like, you know, I'm just playing whatever. And we start singing and writing, like, literally right there and wrote a song, a song called Secretly. Like, we wrote on the spot right there in the studio. Like, literally. I forgot what album that was on. I think that was on a J-Lo album. It's called Secretly. So Now, and when we did it, right, when we recorded it, first thing I said to Corey, like, yo, I can hear Janet on this. And, like, literally, when the album came out, Janet had did an interview and said that was her favorite song on the album, Secretly. Wow. Like, it's, it's, you got the ear. Yeah, it was like, it, it's a Janet vibe all day. When you get a chance, look it up, song called Secretly. It's definitely a Janet vibe, like, all day. Hmm. How many more times? How, how did, how did, how did, because, you know, Trey has hits. Right. You know, Trey has hits on hits. But I feel like this was a record that we needed from him. Um, his voice on this, it's just, it's amazing. How mm -hmm. did, how did this song come about? True story. All right, let, let me give you, can I do some background? Sure. So I met Trey when he was 15 years old. Troy had just um, got Trey, just signed him. He brought him to the studio. Like, yo, I got this new young kid named Trey. You got some, some music for us. Of course. Um, so I've been working with Trey and Troy for a long time. Uh, so we have a camaraderie. When it came to how many times, uh, of course, you know, 2020 was a crazy year. Um, for us as black men, well, I know for me, I wasn't surprised at anything, any of the stuff that happened to us during 2020 because it been happening to us. You know, I wasn't surprised. No surprise. Y'all, we all home now. We ain't got nothing else to do but sit and watch and see what's happening. Now y'all have to pay attention because you know, we all, the whole country is on quarantine. So um, it was crazy. Troy hit me on a Tuesday and said, Trey wants to do something for the movement. I'm like, cool. I did, you know, I did the track, sent it to Troy. I think on a, no, he must have been on a Wednesday. He hit me on Monday. He hit me on a Monday. Did the track, sent it to Troy. He did what he did to it, put his magic on it. That was on a Tuesday. On Wednesday, no, Tuesday night, Troy sends it to me back, sends back to me what Trey, him and Trey did. I'm like, oh, that's fire, that's dope. Troy calls me Wednesday morning. Yo, can we get a choir in here? I'm like, uh, I'm new to Atlanta, but I'll see what I can do. So I call, <laughs> I call my worship pastor at my church, Enrique Holmes. Shout out, amazing gospel artist. You get a chance, to get his project. He's amazing, and he's very integral. I don't shout out gospel people that ain't integral. He's integral. He actually practices what he sings. But mm. I called him up like, hey, um, I call him YP. YP, um, I need a choir. Then we pull this off. He's like, for when? I was like, uh, tonight at 7 o'clock, I'll call you back. Get me back an hour later. I got a choir. We had about nine, eight or nine people. We go to Troy's house. They wrote the choir spot, the choir part on spot. This was like Wednesday. Troy wrote it right there on the spot. They sang it. Now, this is during the pandemic. You know, Dean Knight, Dean Knight was going crazy. Like, his numbers is crazy because, you know, he was doing the live music thing. So, mm -hmm. he he debuted it. It wasn't even mixed. Trey just sent him the rough, like, boom. Dean Knight debuted it. It went crazy. It all happened within a week. By that Saturday, it was mixed. And two weeks later, it was released. Like, it happened all within one week. Like literally, Trey and Troy wrote it. Me and Troy did the track. We brought the choir in, uh, and like, and the rest is history. Like it was just crazy. Literally happened in a week. That song happened in one week. Very much needed. It was the perfect timing. Yeah, it was the perfect timing, man. Yeah. Um, wow, wow. I think that's gonna be 
I like it within the head years. Years oh, I, absolutely. Like, I ain't going to hold you, man. I got a little emotional when I, when I heard it done. I'm like, man, once again, be, being a black man in America, you know, my first interaction with the police, I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They chased me down and pulled their guns on me at eight years old. I wasn't even doing nothing. I was being a kid playing. You know, so it definitely means a lot. Especially, especially where we from. You know, yeah. it gives you chills, man. It directly yeah. gives you chills. Yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> Give me feedback. Um, you know what? What is, I, I know you do a lot of artist um, development. What is what is your what is the process when you when you're developing the artist? Okay, I I can't tell you everything because. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell you, I'm well, you don't want you don't want them to take your formula. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Not only that, but I don't want them to uh, hear what the formula is and try to you know capitulate to what they think the formula is. Uh, part of the formula of my artist development, though, is my first contact with an artist. We'll vibe, we'll talk, we'll do music, and then I ghost them for like two months. Wow. Disappear. And that's what they sound like. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, boy. So, like you 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 ghost them to see how they gonna to see how they're gonna I wanna see your response. response. I wanna like see you how said, you respond. Like you said earlier, you wanna see if they're gonna I wanna see how you respond to, to me. I wanna see how you respond to rejection. Cause that's mm -hmm. the number one feeling, that's the number one obstacle in the in this music business. Is reject because you're going to get eight million no's and three yeses. Absolutely. So I want to see how you handle rejection, and I've, I'm telling you, you know, the Lord how, said how, in the word, how, how let, the, let the wheat and tear grow together. What'd you say? How many people do you think you lost with, 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 I don't with know. rejection? You know, God said, let the wheat and tear grow together. I'll do it separate. <laughs> <laughs> and. and I, I'll tell you a true story. I, I, will, I, I wish I could remember his name because I would call him out. I, don't even, I think his name was Jay. Jay something. This was years ago when I still lived in Connecticut. Dope dude. He was hosting like a live talent show. Put him to the side like, Yo, I like you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Dope. Let's work together. Bet. So we did a record together. We vied. Boom, boom. I ghosted him. This is before text and everything. But I think I had a two-way page back then, whatever. No, I had a trio, my trio. And uh, so I ghosted him for about two or three weeks, whatever, maybe a month. He reaching out, yo, what's up, where you at? Da, da, da. By the second week, the messages was like, yo, mf -er, da, 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 black ass nigga, da, 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 you ain't take you all that. Like, spazzing on me within two weeks. Like, then he stopped. But then like a month later, he came back. Yo, you ain't this like just spazzing. And I like, yeah, you were. I'm glad I didn't work with you. You're not ready. You can't if you can't handle rejection. This is deal. not your business deal. for you. Mm -hmm. And that's little rejection. Just me going ghost. That's light. That's a little rejection. I just ghosted you. You know that ain't major. I just want to see how you respond. Are you gonna be humble enough to be like, hey, haven't heard from you in a while. Hope you're still interested. I'm just going to keep sending you month, uh, music, you know what I'm saying? Hope you're interested. You know, this is what I've been working on, you know, just sporadically. How you respond to my rejection will tell me if I can work with you or not. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if, you, if you can't take it from me, you can't take it from a label. You can't take it from anyone. And, you know, mm -hmm. rejection is always good. I tell people rejection is always good. Uh, uh, you know, where I come from, I, I'm pretty sure you can testify where you come from, rejection fuse you. Absolutely. To go harder. It fuse you to go harder. It fuse you to, cool, you're not going to notice me. I'm going to make you notice me. It's gasoline. <laughs> it's fuel. And, and sometimes people, you know, and it's not just in music. You get rejected. Yeah. People get rejected every day, you know. Every people that day. work nine to five jobs get rejected. Every you know, day. Every day. So if you can't handle, if you can't handle that, then... It's not for I you, bro. Know, I don't know what world you're living in. Yeah. 
And unfortunately, this generation, the generation that's coming up now, and I don't want to sound like, I hate to sound like an old guy or OG that's you know, <laughs> coming down on, but the sense of entitlement mm-hmm. is, is, is a, and it's kind, it's, it's a, not kind of a, it's a deterrent. And they don't realize how, how much it's blocking and stopping them from getting to a place where they can, you know, be successful in certain areas. I'm 45 years old. I have no, there's no shame in my name. I'm 45 years old. I've been married twice. I got eight kids. My oldest is 29. My youngest is 13. Sheesh. So I got, I got the, I'm, I'm lit. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm current on language. I'm current on music because my children, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't be on TikTok like that, but I'm on it because I'm my, my, my kids is on it. So I understand that generation, but the sense of entitlement that they have because of my generation, us, my age, those are our kids. We talk about that generation, but they are our kids. If they're a certain type of way, it's because how we how we raise them. You feel what I'm saying? So it's like to implement the work ethic, the drive. I'm not saying all all of them, but it's a lot of them in that generation that don't understand. You gotta work for it. Like, pay your dues. Like, I pay my dues. Like, one of my oh, almost got emotional. I gotta go see my therapist because I haven't dealt with this yet. <laughs> <laughs> one of my uh, closest friends in the game, like he was there when I first got on the game. Mark Morales, Prince Mark D. He just passed. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. if you That's knew me in that man. area, That's... right? R.P. Mark. If you knew me when I was coming up, Mark was like a big brother to me. He took me in his home. He fed me, put money in my pocket when I needed it. Like for years, like he was my manager, but it turned into more like a, a, a family type of situation. Like that was my dude, but he schooled me on a lot in the game. And I was open. I was, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just soaked it all in because it's Prince Martin D, a fat boy. You know what I'm saying? This generation may not know, but I'm like, you don't know who this is. Like, not only Fat Boys, songwriter, I'm saying producer, like, his career is extraordinary. Absolutely. And at the time, when he, when I was working with him, like, it was just, like, a, an amazing thing for me to be with someone that I looked up to growing up. And now he's my manager, and we got a relationship, and he's looking out for me. You know, I never, I never felt entitled like he owed me. Like, I pay my dues. Like I would go, I would get on the Metro North train from Connecticut with a bag of clothes on the shoulder, my drum machine in a case, and two keyboards in the case, and like a rack mount with modules. You musicians, you know what that is. I'm getting on the train weekly, going to New York, like paying my dues, carrying my own luggage, like doing what I gotta do to hustle to get food for myself and still make sure my family eating back home, like. Paying dues, like carrying my own equipment, staying in hotels, sleeping on floors, sleeping on air mattresses, like all that. They don't want to pay dues. You got to pay dues. You got to pay dues. You got to earn it or you won't appreciate it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and if you get it quick, as quick as it comes, as quick as, quick it, as it go. Goes. Literally. I've seen it happen a million times. Like literally, I've seen it happen. So, yeah, that's how I feel about that. So let's talk about your um the the contest you the contest you have. Who got next? Let's talk about that and um the people that's watching for all the artists that's watching. You got something really dope um going on where you're giving artists an opportunity um to work with you to get um, production done by you and mm-hmm. and, and and any artist that's listening, if you think about joining this contest, you may get ignored for a month or two. That's one of the things that he dropped tonight in that artist development. So take note. Yeah. You ignored for a month or two. Don't go cursing the man out. <laughs> you ain't going to get it. And that's the uh, first step of, of artist development for me. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah so the contest, it, huh? um, what? so it's basically... It's just my way of trying to give back 
but at the same time, and at the same time, give opportunity. Um, the cutoff date is March 16th, and we're just accepting all submissions of, you know what I'm saying, R&B artists. Uh, if it's music, I want it to be something original. If you're singing a cappella, you can sing whatever you want. It has to be 30 seconds. Uh, a cappella, you can sing whatever you want. If it's music, I want to hear originality. Whether you wrote or someone else wrote, I want to hear where you at. If you if you bold enough to submit a song, like a full song, I I really want to. We're going to analyze it, um, and you know whoever wins is going to win a thousand dollars. And wherever they are in the country, whether they're here in Atlanta or if they're in LA, New York, we'll fly them down, uh, put them up in a hotel for a few days, and we're going to do two records. Um, what's not in the flyer, what's not being promoted, which I will say on your show exclusively, and I probably won't put, I won't ever put in the flyer, I'm going to say on your show, those that are watching know is, I have, of course I have friends in, in the music industry, and I have a couple of labels that are like, yo, let us know, you know what I'm saying, how that contest go, you know, we're more than willing to like, you know what I'm saying, do like a little distribution situation, or if they dope us, you know, we, we might want to get in on it, you know, give them a little big one, opportunities to follow one song deal yeah like so we'll do a two song demo but there's definitely an opportunity to go further you know like get maybe get a little deal get a little distribution whatever like you know everybody just want to give back so i really feel like um there's a lot of talent out there that is unheard and people don't know how to get heard or don't have an opportunity um it's just not me listening to the music i have a team I have a team of producers. I have a team of writers. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard of a production team called The Breed. They're from Connecticut, too. Uh, dope producers. They're in French Montana, Chris Brown, Trey Song, a whole bunch of folk, like, dope. So they're on the team. I have songwriters. So, like, the two-song two demo is just not going to be me and the artist. It's going to be a collaborative effort between me and my team because I'm not going to do Mary Had a Little Lamb just because you won the contest. Like, if you do <laughs> records, we do records, we're going, we trying to do some bangers. Like, we don't just do records, just do records. Like, the purpose is to get you a deal or get you in a situation to set you on a good path. You know what I mean? So the contest is really just to pull people up, give somebody an opportunity that may not, you know, normally have an opportunity, you know, put a little cash in your pocket at the same time. Mm -hmm. And how and how can they submit their music? What's good? You can submit the, email, the music email, to right? uh, the email address is CEO CF music at gmail.com. CEO CF music at gmail.com. If you go on my Instagram page, there's a, a web link. You can click the link in the bio and even on my Facebook page. My e Instagram page is Troy underscore Oliver. Go on the, uh, uh, in the bio and you see the link and on Facebook it's just Troy Oliver. I have the same link over there. Click the link, it'll give you all the instructions that you know that you need to uh, submit your songs. Um what I didn't say was there's no limit on how much you can submit. Hmm. And some people have submitted more than one and more a few and, and that's on Mary had a, and that's on Mary had a little man. That's on Mary had a little man. <laughs> <laughs> so I welcome but that. Only yeah. if it's great. Only if yeah. it's great. Don't, don't, I, I don't play around. Like, you know, come what you come with the best. Like, I mean, I have a team like the, I, I got a solid squad that I trust and we're going through the music. Like, yeah, we'll probably announce the, I think the cutoff date is the 16th. I'm not, we haven't agreed yet on when we're going to announce the winner, but it, um, I'll definitely let you know because I want to, it's not going to be like a check or a cash app. Whoever wins. We're going to do it live. We're going to show, you know, putting the money in their hand, you know, cash. The, it wasn't a game. It wasn't a joke. It wasn't for hype. Like, here's the no $1,000. Yeah, no gimmicks. It's a $1,000 cash, and we'll record us working in the studio and all that just so everybody can see that cool. it's real. Because the reality of it is, this is not the last contest we're going to do. Like, we're trying to start something new. Like, this is going to be like a trend. We'll probably do it like two or three times a year. I don't know if we're going to go with the Who Got Next because I've heard that so many times. times yeah we'll probably have to come up with another slogan to and brand it and trademark it and all that but i just want to give back man like real talk and possibly discover the next dopest r&b artist 
dope. You know, that's the goal. That's dope. Wow. Make sure y'all make those submissions. Yeah, listen, man, I'm, submit, I'm, I, submit, listen, submit. I, I'm, I'm submitting my artists. I'm submitting my artists. I'm putting it in the bag. And and and, and uh, my name is Azari. She's a beautiful uh, song swiss out of Chicago. And I'm going to go through the process. And, and not just because I know you, but I'm just going to go through the process and submit it like everybody else yeah. and wait to see if wait to see yeah. if we hear back from you. But she got some dope music, too. Yeah, dope. Yeah, hey man, I'm I'm excited about. I'm I'm I can't wait to hear. It. I'm 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 a musician. I'm a producer. I love listening to new music, new artists. So I haven't heard anyone as of yet. I'm not gonna start listening to submissions until probably like the end of next week. But the email is flooded. I'm telling you, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, Break the server. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, you, you know, I think you know that if your email gets full. If you don't clear some out, it'll. I mean, you send somebody an email, it'll bounce back. I, I, I pay two ninety nine a month, <laughs> so you they can't the feel me. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I clicked that button. I pay two ninety nine a month. Yeah, so I'm good. The extra email back. storage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, some people emails back. This email is full. I'm like, yeah. Mm -mm. Cool. Yeah, no, I paid it. It's only two dollars and ninety nine cents a month. I, I, I cleanse that full. I, I, I cleanse that full emails. I yeah. never use capacity because I always delete. Right. I okay. Delete, yeah. Delete or move it over. Yeah. I don't delete. I'm not that person. I got so many on. I can look at my phone. I got eight thousand six hundred eighty six unread emails. <laughs> nah, listen. I got you beat. I got you beat. Oh, you got, got me got beat. 11, got, oh my god. Eleven thousand seven hundred. Look, it just went from one to two because it just uploaded eleven thousand seven hundred and ninety-two oh, unread. <laughs> yeah, you got me beat. Wow, I thought I was bad. Nah, listen, my fiance mm. just flashed me her phone. Right, she has a hundred and thirty thousand. I don't know why. Emails. What? That's from listen. That's from Fashion Nova. That's from um. <laughs> what? That's from, that's from Beyonce Ivory Park. Uh, I didn't know that's a phone could hold Rihanna. that many. What? <laughs> A hundred and thirty thousand. That's crazy. She, she's definitely playing, paying two ninety nine a month for that story. <laughs> <laughs> Look, whether she know it or not. Yeah. <laughs> whether you know Dang. it or not. I, listen, I'm charging you that right there. Dang, Shoot. that's a lot. Bath and Body Works, LinkedIn, all oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I get the I get the Bath and Body Works. Huh? Did you get Did you get sell this past Saturday? Ten dollars off. <laughs> No, I didn't get that one. I didn't look at that one. Oh, yeah. The last, the last yeah, that's how the sales. have sales. This past Saturday, $10 off three wick candles. Was that the candles? Damn. Yep. Three wicks. Yeah, the three wicks. $10 off. Dang. No, yep. I was I was on the site when they had the $6 soaps. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Yep. They had, they had the three, $10 off three wick, and they had $6 soap. Six for 20 or four for 20 something. Yeah. Listen, you need to check. <laughs> Fact. You done plugged in. You done plugged in Bath and Body. You done plugged Fact. in restaurants. Facts. I'm a foodie, man. I love to eat, man. If you follow me, if you follow me on any of my social media, you know I love to eat and I love to eat good. Like I don't. Yeah. There ain't no games out here. So now I will be honest. I have a guilty pleasure. Maybe once every two to three months, like eleven thirty, twelve thirty at night. Is it crab legs? I'll go to McDonald's and get a, a fish fillet sandwich <laughs> with some fries. <laughs> <laughs> it got to be late night, though. But <laughs> it, gotta be late. it tastes better. It, yeah. it really tastes better at that time. It do. You got to get them fries. Them uh, fries be uh, hot? and hot. Listen, I tell, them, I tell them lightly salted so they drop me a fresh pair. Yeah, I almost spoke in tongues. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, as, a, as a father of, you said eight kids, right? Eight, yeah. Six girls, two boys. As a father of eight, how do you balance um, your career, work, you know, your career and family? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you um, that? To be honest and transparent, it's not easy. Um, I'm single now. I've been divorced for two and a half years. Uh, it's a little bit easier being divorced, if, if that makes any sense. Um, I got six girls, man, and I don't, want you, I don't want you to get in trouble, man, saying that. Oh, no, I'm not going to get in trouble. You was on the floor, they showed me, you said, I'm like, oh, no, we're cool. <laughs> oh, no, me and, my, no, me and my baby <laughs> mamas, we cool, yeah, yeah, we, we all right. 
She would be like, shout out baby mama, number one, number two, Nicola and Nikia. Love y'all. God bless y'all. I don't pay no more child support. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I ain't in court for child support. Ah, let me. My bad flashback. Um, yeah, but it's not easy. Uh <laughs> My, yeah, listen, we're going to loop that. We're going to loop it. Trust me, you're going to see yeah. it on the internet somewhere. I ain't mad at it. <laughs> I got, listen, if you ever been in child support, if you ever dealt with child support, you understand. I, I'm a, I might put on some praise music and do a praise break in here. Shoot. Mess around. <laughs> um, so I have, you know, I have older daughters. Like, my daughter's like 27. I have two 27-year-old daughters. I have a 21-year-old daughter. Just turned 20. She just turned 20 in December. I have twins that are 19 and a 13 year old daughter. So it's like, it's a range and they all are at set different points in their life. So it's like, I got, and they're all, they all have their own individual personality. Like I have a daughter that's in graduate school from med school. She's about to be a psych nurse, you know, she's in her master's degree. I have another daughter wow. that graduated from Morgan State. You know, she's an architectural engineer. Like she goes on sites. Then my other daughter is like, she's getting ready to be a teacher. She studies classical music, you know. Then I got another daughter. She's doing business management at Alabama State. Other daughter doing something, something at, like, it's like my daughters are excelling. Like, they're dope. But they they don't pull on me. I'll say I I just want to make sure that they don't meet. I hope I can say this, but I, I don't know. You know, I never been on the show, but clown niggas. You know, so <laughs> I keep it. I've always kept it a buck with all of them. You know, you know, unfortunately, I got to be on the phone, hear the calls, and have the conversations about niggas that ain't about nothing. And I'm like, I give my advice, whatever. But you know, you do what you have to do at the end of the day. I mm-hmm. do what I have to do. You know what I'm saying? My sons, they cool, they gooch, you know, they niggas. Y'all go ahead, be niggas, you know? Uh-huh. Don't be a nigga, nigga. But, you know, just be a nigga, you know. Don't be too bad, but y'all just... But, he, said, don't, he said don't need uh, plan Bs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? You said I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> my, my oldest boy, we're not going to... I love you, Troy. <laughs> oh, but you know. Uh, but, yeah. Is that is that Troy Jr., Texas? Yep. Yep. I see the comments. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't seeing none of the comments. I don't know why I ain't. But yeah, so I mean it's not easy, but you do what you have to do. Uh I love my children. Uh I believe I'm a firm believer in kids didn't have to be here. Mm-hmm. So it's our responsibility to make sure that they are right and we take care of them. Kids didn't have to be here. So I you do what you have to do to make sure your kids are good. It's been a million times I've given my laugh to make sure my kids were good. They don't know this. I've never told them this, and I never will. They never will know when I had to give. I had a few dollars in the bank, a few dollars in my account, a few dollars in my pocket, and they need it. And I was like, hey, here you go. And I went without. But they ain't asked to be here, so do what you got to do. You went without that, 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 that filet fish sandwich from that McDonald's. Fish. But I went to <laughs> I almost spoke a time. But I went to Wendy's and got the 99 cent menu. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Fact. Yeah. <laughs> Sacrifices, man. Yeah. Sacrifices for your family. That's, that's what it's all about, man. Like, you do what you got to do, man. You know, I never wanted any of my kids to be in the music industry. I told both of their mothers, you know, when they were like, I don't want my kids to do this. I don't want my kids to do music. I want to be scientists and teachers and doctors lawyers like don't do don't come this path that i came although i love it but i didn't choose music it chose me and it wasn't easy you know what i'm saying but it's in their blood they can't even help it like my my youngest boy is a music teacher he just graduated from hbcu my daughter's 21 she's currently at morgan state she's graduating this year she's gonna be a music teacher it's like it's in their blood my youngest baby 13 He's about to That's a lot of high Yeah. <laughs> God, God be praised. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, my youngest baby, she's about to attend the high school of technology and music out here in Georgia. So it's like, I didn't want them to do it, but it's in them. 
You know, they're gonna do what they love, their passion. So, and all we can do is be here for them. Like, as a father of eight children, I'm a banker, I'm a therapist, I'm a chef, I'm a reverend. You know, I you, you just wear many hats. You and, parent, you have to do it all. And and contrary to what people may believe, the older they get. It's not they don't need you. It's just it shifts. Like your response, your your relationship and your responsibility as a parent shifts. You're saying not not yeah. Now you're Oprah, now you're Doctor Phil, and you're probably gonna be Bank of America a few times too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's just the way 20, it is. Twenty four hour Bank of America at that. Yeah, like legit. <laughs> like I literally had to get, I had to get a whole new phone just to get cash app just so i could do the cash app thing because cash app kicked me off a long time ago and they wouldn't let me on so yeah they did the same thing to me you know that really they, I, they the never same, told me why did they tell you they why? did the same thing to me nah I never told me why i tried to contact everything i could not me get too. into that and i had money in there too i, I could not get back into that old cash app and yeah. if, the, if you had the same phone number it's over and not yeah you in. yep i had to get a whole new phone whole new number whole new email all that yeah, Cash App. I don't know. I don't know what happened. They kicked me off. I'm like, I'm not scamming or selling drugs. I don't know why y'all kicked me off. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like, okay, did I violate the community guidelines? I was just yeah. sending money to people and getting money from people. Nothing wrong. I don't get it. Cash App. Y'all need to holler at us. Let us know what's good. Shit. I thought of cash app. That's some bullshit. Um, <laughs> oh, listen, damn, I, I know we can use four letter words. I'd have been cussing. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to be respectful. Yo, real nah, talk, nah, good. no cap. You, listen, I don't you, know if she watched it. I text my pastor before I <laughs> got her. I said, listen, I'm doing an interview. I'm probably using some four letter words. So I'm just giving you a heads up. She's like, stay holy, man of God. I'm like, okay. So I'm going to be using a four-letter word. He said, shit, man, fly out a couple times. <laughs> nah, man, nah, we good. We good. Oh, we good. Uh, you know, we Gucci. I try to keep yeah, it uh, yeah. professional and, and yeah. feel the energy, though, Family, and but the conversation going on. It's As the music. The business. Continue it's to go on as it's well. the business. It's the business. Oh, the <laughs> ballet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start to fly out a little yeah. bit. <laughs> it's what we do. <laughs> so to, you listen, you know what? You, you, you got to stop putting these brands, okay? You, you, I know, because they shout at somebody else out. You can put Arizona all up in the camera. And we if got you 500 really, if you people really, watching. If you really think it's tea in here. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that. That's the, old, nah, that's the old That's the old. That's the old trick right there. <laughs> you ain't got the red cup. You got the blue cup. I ain't mad at you, though. The blue cup, got the blue one. No, no affiliation. No affiliation. Yeah, no affiliation. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> that's just like blue. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, what's what's some advice you can give to, the, to the, <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together? What's some advice you can give to to the producers um, um, out there watching? What's some advice you know <clears throat> you can give them um, on 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 having longevity on staying consistent or never giving up with something you can give them? Um, I would say get a get a foundation, get a spiritual foundation hmm. before anything. Uh, I don't judge people for the spirituality or what they believe. You know, me, myself, personally, I believe in Jesus Christ. You know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, all that good stuff. Amen. That's, that, that's what I believe. That's what I was raised in. But if you are Muslim, you believe in, you know, Allah, you know, Muhammad, whatever you do, get a spiritual foundation because you have to be spirit. You have to be spiritually grounded to be able to deal with what we deal with in this game. Mm -hmm. Right. Because it takes that to be able to, like, back away. Cause I, I know a few people right now that are no longer in the music business because they couldn't control their temper. They walk mm -hmm. into an office or a building. Raging, cussing, smacking folk. You know what I'm saying? Like, as a producer, that's not what we do. I would say, first thing, get get some spiritual grounding. Um, secondly, stay focused. Stay focused. Like, do what you have to. So it's I won't say it's hard, 
So when you say producers, you I have to talk to a broad range of people. I'm talking to people from the age of 16 to the age of 50. So how do I talk to a, a group so large without, you know, neglecting a certain age number? How do I talk to a group of producers like some maybe somebody maybe 21, somebody maybe 31, 41. The 21 year old is fresh out of school, fresh out of college. 31 year old just got married, got a baby. The 41 year old has been married, maybe divorced, got a few kids, but he still has the abilities and the skill to produce. What do I say that will be able to penetrate and relate exactly. to all three group, groups of people? Right? I would say stay focused. Stay focused. Man, it's been times a lot of people don't know. I have, I lived out my car. I had all my equipment, all my clothes, all my platinum, platinum plaques, gold plaques in my car. Sheesh. Had nowhere to go. Nobody knew. You should have told me where you was at, man. I was sending the boys to get them plaques. <laughs> <laughs> they would have been in the background right like now. <laughs> they would have been in the background right now. <laughs> yeah, but like, you know, <laughs> if it's your passion and it's what you love, real talk, there's nothing I got to say to you. Mm -hmm. You already know what you got to do. If you know, if music chose you and you didn't choose music, the only thing I need to say to you is stay focused. That's it. If music ain't choose you and you chose music, I can't relate. I'm not. I'm not trying to be harsh, on, but I, I can't relate because I ain't choose. Music chose me. Like I said, I came out my mother's womb with drumsticks in my hand. All my life, anybody that anybody that's known me, we I go back to kindergarten. I wish I I can't see the comments. If someone was watching from kindergarten, they'll tell you. All my life, anybody that's known me went to school with me, choice of e music. That's it. I would just tell you to stay focused. If music has chose you, stay focused, stay committed, and stay consistent. And remember that every no is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that situation is just not for you. Sometimes it's that. You know, sometimes you, you know you hear a no, it means that that that's not, you know, that's just not the right place, it's not the right time, it's not the situation. And sometimes hearing no saves you. It saves you from stuff. Bro. No, no cap. No cap. You no want to be lying. in a certain place and with, with with certain people, and you hear no. Do you ever look back, time later, maybe a month, maybe a year, maybe a two, you know, a couple years later, like that. I'm glad I wasn't a part of that situation. Listen. I'm glad I wasn't on that ride. You know, so. Bro. I I've seen a couple situations like that. I ain't want to talk about it because, you know. But absolutely. It's a very accurate statement you just made. What do you want your legacy? I asked everyone on here that comes on. What do you want your legacy to be? My legacy? Wow, that's a, that's a good question. Nobody ever asked me that. I have plenty of interviews and nobody. The cups sound a little light. You might want to refill that. It is um, going to light. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> No, 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 no. They cut the check, so I got to plug yeah. it in. <laughs> I need you. Nope, Y'all came in with my son to he's, bring my charger. I'm starting to hear your ice a little bit. <laughs> my phone is trying to die. Yeah, I'm charge it up. Mr. Um, Oliver, I'm going to need to send you my address because you're going to be the one taking care of him tonight. Well, <laughs> Y'all in Georgia? Mm -mm, North Carolina. Oh, yeah, We're gonna be in Georgia far. this weekend. I'm hitting up that spot too. I'm not gonna make it, yeah. That's too far. I'm sorry. He'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be good. It's a little bubbly. If it was what the bumble, bumble. If it, if, it, if it was the bumble, that's a rum. Okay. Um, made, made by the same company as Bel Air. If it was the bumble, it'd be a different, little different vibe. But yeah, it's the I bubbly. I don't drink hard liquor. It don't, it don't agree with me. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the bumble. I, I, I'll take a couple shots here and there yeah. of the bumble. I have a very addictive personality, so I can't drink hard liquor. Mm. What you sipping on tonight? You got some wine? This is a uh, grape juice. <laughs> Church folks watching. <laughs> hey, 
Ah, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, what was we saying? You was you was you was stating you were saying what you wanted your legacy to be. I think that's what we were going to. Oh about. yeah, man, because no one has ever asked me that question before. Um, I don't. I've never really thought about that to be honest with you. Hmm. I've never really thought about what I want my. I want my children to be my legacy. I want people to see my children be like, that's Troy Oliver. Whatever, whatever is with my nurse practitioner daughter, with my architect daughter, with my opera singing, who sings the like Rick Dancer, son. Angel. Not yeah. the son. <laughs> Little Troy. We're not gonna talk about little Troy. <laughs> like my children are my legacy. Mm-hmm. Whatever fields they choose to go through, that's my legacy. That 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 for me that that speaks to me. Like whatever my children, how they succeed. My goal was to make sure my children super supersede me in everything in life. Like my children should do better than me. So that's my legacy. Yeah. Bless, okay. blessings, my brother. Blessings, definitely, man. And I know you got. This has been a great conversation. I I know you got. Um, some music with genuine that's coming soon. You yeah, know, we're working, man. Working I love again. G, man. I got stories about genuine, but I'm gonna tell them like that's my guy. <laughs> I've done I've done a lot of shows. I actually got like two shows right now on hold due okay. to the pandemic. Right. Um, two shows with him due to the pandemic, so he got my money. So okay. <laughs> you see him just like your flow safe. Yeah. Got he, got, he got the check already. Yeah. Um, got him the check, but um. Yeah, Jenny G is a is a is a is a amazing uh, brother human being. I'm pretty sure you got what, real what, solid dude. What year did you guys start working together? Was that two thousand one? So I think the record came out in two thousand two. Yeah, two thousand one. Like it was crazy because he had just less, he he had just lost his mother and his father. Wow. And he was working. Like when we did differences. It was a vibe in that room that I've never experienced. Like, you know, because we talked, we had conversation. Like, it was it was deep. It was deep. The vibe when we did differences in that room, it was just it wasn't even an engineering it. It was just me and him. Like the vibe was crazy. So we, I know he remember when he talked about it. Like the vibe in that room. Like I said, he kicked me out when I when I was done with the track. <laughs> Like, yo, you gotta go, cause he needed that moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying he needed that the moment. To, you know what I'm saying? Just man, G. I remember the video. The video was stupid. It made no sense. I never liked that video. Hype you need to be smacked. I never understood that video. It had nothing to do with the song. I like why is he floating in the air, in the clouds? The- stupid. <laughs> That's my video. That's good. When he put I the like hand, the when he put the hand in the air, and he, you know, shake it a little bit, going video, up. See, I think that the video was different. Hype Williams oh. did that video. I never liked the video. He said, I "Never liked the video." He said, "The video was <laughs> stupid." stupid. <laughs> see, see, I didn't like. I didn't not the like song. It. The song. The song. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like you like should have took G in the middle. I should have. I felt like the video should have went in another direction. Like G, like yo. My whole life has changed since you came in, like, maybe, like, some Tyler Perry wedding situation or, you know, like, somebody's in the hospital and they came back to life. There's something more dramatic. I think Hype just, just got to check. Hype might have been more. I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> when he did the treatment to that video, when I seen that, I'm like, is that the video? What? Okay. He was flying in the video. He was yeah, flying. He was floating in the clouds. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> But, it, just, you know. it gave it gave you a different energy though. It gave you a different energy. And then the thing about it is that's a song that you hear at weddings. It could have been a dream. He was in the clouds. See, it now you have to, you yeah, see, to I'm giving you I'm giving you guys yeah. thoughts. I was, see, gonna, I was tell, kid, I was gonna tell you that yeah, I was gonna tell you mute like her mic. Mute your, I know it's fancy your fiance, but mute her mic. Um mute her. Talking about could have been a dream. <laughs> 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 Said, <laughs> <laughs> there was no damn 
dream. It's been no dream. <laughs> Hype was high. He ain't never wake up either. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Baby, the clouds are all dream. But no, nah, I love oh, G. Man. You know what? Like, G, genuine is family, man. Like, we, yeah. Shout out to Hype Williams, goddamn that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Hype. You did a lot of videos. I don't know what the hell you did on that one. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Troy, man, thank you, my brother. Thank you for your time. Thank Absolutely, you for your man. Appreciate thank you. Thank you for everything you have given to music, everything you have given to the culture. Um, I got your boys coming on soon. I got my friends coming on soon. Word? She yeah, and come, uh, they gonna, the yeah. Vitch? Yeah, they're going to come on the show, man. They're going to come on the show. Have my guy. They did a show. We did a show down here a couple years ago. Uh, At the, uh, I forgot the name of the place, but yeah. Them my guys, man. A lot of niggas, for real, for real. Be more. Yeah. Be more. Them some singing niggas, like. Make them sing they acapella. Sang. They sang. Yeah. They sang. I, last time I booked them was at the uh, Resorts World Casino in, um, in, it's in Queens, in New York. Oh, wow. And, and it was like snow. Some stuff happened that day. It was just mm. one of those days. Mm -hmm. you know, bad weather. You trying to do a concert with most yeah. artists. Think bad. You know how, yeah. You know how stuff, honey, ice tea could go. So yeah. And she was like, "Now nah, we're gonna get in the car. We're gonna drive from Baltimore and to New York. They in the snow. In the snow. They drove. I think flight something got something got canceled. Whatever they was doing, either it was a car ride or a flight. Something back got canceled. Mm. And I was like, okay. I'm gonna get somebody else. I'm just filling somebody. We in New York, so right. I get somebody else to just kind of like fill in the gap where they at. And it was like, and I was like, we just, you know, we do it another time. And it was like, nah, we coming. Wow. And, yep. They came. They came through, and they got out the car, went straight to the stage. Straight to the stage. Killed Tore it. Down. Yeah. Tore it down. Tore it down. Tore it down. They're my niggas right there. <laughs> Tore it down. Yeah. Dope. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah. the Who Got Next, you're probably going to end up calling this something else, but the Who Got yeah. Next, y'all make sure y'all, all, all musicians, if you're serious about what you do, if you want to work with the King, Troy Oliver, the email, everything is listed on this page. It's also mm -hmm. listed in the comments. Absolutely. March 16th is the deadline. It's 30 yep. seconds, but if you want to send more than 30 seconds, go ahead and send it. I'm not going to listen. I'm telling you right now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Cause when you when you when you click it, it tells you how long it is. Yeah, I'm not. If it say more than thirty seconds, I'm not listening. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Then. I told you to send, send a full song. Look. I'm not listening. <laughs> follow instructions. Follow instructions. <laughs> listen, I'm going to submit my artist to Jari. So what I'm doing Dope. is I'm weaning everybody else out. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm limiting the emails so you can get to that one faster. Gotcha. It's great. Not messing with you, man. Cool. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Salute. Salute. Thank you for everything you have given. Thank you for the conversation. I know that there's much more that you're doing. I know there's a lot of things you're working on. And, man, we can't wait to see it. We can't wait to see it, man. No doubt. Appreciate it, man. Man, blessings to you, man. Uh, blessings to you, my brother. You too. You and the fam, man. God safe. bless, man. You be safe. Everyone be safe out here, man. Thank you, yeah. Troy. Absolutely. All right. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for tuning into the Flowway Show. I don't know why my light like went out. Like I think I gotta tap it again. Um, salute Troy Oliver, multi platinum super producer. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, Billboard Awards, Grammy nominated, ASCAP Awards.